James. Hello, mate. <laughs> well, we've had a few people asking, uh, since we've installed these roof windows, how we're going to finish it off with a plasterboard. How do we like to do it? And what's the actual preferred way for manufacturers to do it to allow for the proper heat circulation to go around the room so we're not causing condensation on the windows or heat build up in this area. So this is a, a unique feature to key light windows, which is, if you've got this little pull here tab, there's one on each side of the window and basically what it does, once we've pulled that tab, it's got a thermal collar. Fills out and completely seals all the way around the window uh, to ensure there's no drafts coming through whatsoever. As soon as we pulled it off, it started to expand already. Uh, and after 24 hours, it's at its full expansion and then we know it's fully sealed. Even though it says it takes 24 hours, we don't need to wait and watch it expand for 24 hours. We know it's gonna do that, but we can carry on plasterboarding straight away. The first thing we're going to sort out is our sides. The hole for the plasterboard has just been rough cut in. We we fitted the windows. Um, obviously, when we came to plasterboard, we didn't want to try and get it accurate on a great big 8x4 sheet. We wanted to get it in there roughly cut out. And now we're at this point, we can work out a little bit more accurately how we're going to get these measurements. We've done our, our best to get everything nice and parallel and square, which is as good as we can get it. But obviously, you get bows and timbers and what have you. Then you get a nice square window that goes in, which may not necessarily match exactly with the rafters. It could be two or three millimeters out, which doesn't sound a lot, but it really, when you've got four windows like we have all next to each other, it's got to be spot on. So the way we're going to do this to start our sides is on the window, we're going to choose a reference point and I'm going to use that edge there. There's the same one at the, on the other side there. And I'm going to get a piece of material, a little bit of the insulating board, and I've got two factory edges. So they are, as square as you're going to get. I've checked it against a bit of square plasterboard as well. This is nice and lightweight, nice and easy to use and you're not struggling around. So this is how we do it. So we'll push that up to the window there with our factory edge there and our factory edge here. And we slide that up until we're flush with that. And I'll put a little mark here on the plasterboard there. So I know that mark lines up with that one there. Up against that side there. Nice and flush, our corresponding mark for that side. All these four marks here correspond with these points on the window, so we know that's perfect with the window. So now what we need to do is check our gap between the side of the window and the rafter. These was put in a few few weeks ago, the rafters were in a few weeks ago, they were soaking wet, they've dried out, they've been knocked around, tiled on. They're never gonna be 100% spot on, as spot on as this window that's been made in the factory. So what we need to do is check what gap we've got in all four corners. So. There we've got 21. Here we've got 18. This side, 22, 25. Over something the size of a roof, that's not a lot at all. It's hardly anything. But when we're plasterboarding up against a nice machine made square window, it's a lot. We're talking joinery standards now for plasterboard. So what we need to do is out of those four numbers, we need to choose the smallest number, which is 18. Because if we went for 25 and we try and cut that back 25, it's going to be past the rafter. We've got to go for the smallest number. So what I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to go around, I'm going to check all the other three windows in here to make sure that there's nothing smaller than 18 because I want all four of these to look exactly the same. They're right next to each other. They've got to look the same. So if I find that one has got the smallest point, it's 16 millimeters, these have all got to be 16. So now I've got all four window reference points marked out on the plasterboard. What I need to do is check the gap between the reference point and the rafter at all four points, because it could be slightly out. This has been made in a factory. This has been put together on site. It was soaking wet when we put it together. It's dried out. 47. 54. Well, how about that? 41. We've just gone with the first one, thinking that, you know, they're all around about the same. When we cut all our trimmers in, we cut them all the same. Things have shrunk, things have moved. I would have gone with 47 as the smallest number for that one. I probably would have started there, gone to there, there. Got to the last one, six millimetres too small. Then I would have been in trouble. Well, I would have been tr tr trimming six millimetres out the edge of the rafter on an angle 
in a loft room that's almost finished. Don't want to be doing that. So it's worth the extra couple of minutes just to go around and check everything. 41's our magic number, so what we need to do now on every reference point that we've marked earlier from the corner of those windows is mark back 41 millimetres, top and bottom, and then we can strike a line down all of them and cut them off. So that might seem a little bit fastidious, word of the week. <laughs> um, but the thing is, you know, you start right, you finish right. So we get this as, you know, as good as we can. We're, we're talking millimetres here. And if for uh, you know, any reason we're slightly out a couple of mil, we've then got our plaster angle bead that goes on. And these are actually gonna be stop beads rather than the angle. Because there's a splay, you can't put an angle bead there. So we've got a flat stop bead, which we can move in and out, give it a mil here and there, if there's any slight problem. So it's gonna be spot on. Uh, I just need my glamorous assistant Ian, can you just give us a hand, mate? You are way too tall to be in that tiny <laughs> space. How did that happen? Oh, hunchback now. You, you, <laughs> need, a, a you need a glamorous assistant <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who is five foot. That's it. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I just want to cut a section out so that I can start my saw. Nice and straight. Did you steal that saw back off the roofers? <laughs> having, oh, I don't know. Having given it to them. No, he, wrote, he writes his name. Anything I give him, he writes his name. <laughs> <on it. laughs> Does he? <laughs> That's because he lives in Big and Hill. <laughs> okay, so we cut a nice chunk out to get our saw in. And then we just run down that line. You see there's a slight difference there. Here it's a bit more flush, a little bit more of a lip. It just shows us that the raft is just fractionally out to the window. So we'll get the other side cut down and then we'll talk about the top and the bottom. Look at the difference we got on this side. Quite a ridge going on there. Runs down a bit shallower there, but it gets bigger and bigger as we go up. It's amazing because you kind of squared all these rafters through as well, didn't we you? Did. But it just shows you. And funnily enough, even looking at the plasterboard, because we've got a nice join here. We've got 28 there, 26 there. So the rafters further out than the. So we know we know we're doing well because the, the plasterboards are nice and square. We started them from a square ball at the end and they've all fitted one against the other. Oh, okay. So it shows the rafter is very fractionally out, yeah. which obviously doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. for what we're doing now, it's important that we get it right. Because they're, they're not rafters, they're trimmers, aren't they? Though? They're still rafters. That's a rafter. Sorry, yeah. you didn't have to bring them in at all. No. You set your rafters out for the window. Yeah, we set it out to start. Okay, got really it. For that. Yeah, Actually, yeah. we didn't. We left them loose because we knew we were going to be putting windows in. Got it. Something would be changed. 45, spot on 45 degrees. <laughs> nice. We've got a little bit of off cut from the side that we're just going to put in the position of where your ball goes into the window and I'm going to slide it up to the side of the rafter. We can eye this up just so we know roughly where we're going here. That line there is the face of our plasterboard that's going to go plumb down. We know this roof's 45 degrees already. It could have changed slightly when the plasterboard's gone on, you never know. A bit of weight of tiles has gone on. We'll move our vial until he's level. Oh, here he goes and lock that off at level and we've got exactly 45 degrees through for sun here i can slide them up a bit make a bit longer and uh, double check it's still 45 so i've got a little bit further to go so it's going to take a bit out of the saw is that the back edge that you're looking for uh, i'm looking for the face of the plaster ball oh, at the moment, currently because that's okay, what we've marked from there Half inch or So we get to see which is our, that's our line. So I know that is the face of our plaster board there, right on that edge, which corresponds where we put slid the board in earlier on. So now we've got to do the same on the other side. 
And if we want to double check, Rufus, the other way to do it, which, which is in fact the way we did it, um, is before we put these windows in, we actually left the trimmers out. We supported the rafter in the middle, top and bottom, fitted the window to the battens on the outside, which worked with the roof, and then we fitted these trimmers retrospectively because it meant we could plumb a line down from here, which worked out exactly where the corner of our trimmer was gonna go, and up here, we did a level line from there across, so we knew that when we put our board in, we're gonna be plumb and level. I just showed you it that way, in case, say for example, somebody else has built the roof, they've already put the trimmers in, and it's just your job to come and put the plasterboard around a, a window. Maybe you're fitting the window as well, but you don't know what's going on before you. That's another option. Um, we like to be well prepared in what we do, and because we cover all stages, we do it that way, but this is another way of doing it. This is the face of the plasterboard that's coming down. So all we're gonna do, we'll use a bit of the board that we're gonna use, just mark it back half an inch so we know that that's the actual cut. Ping a line there if my uh, beautiful assistant. Ian! Hi. Yeah. You're good at the scene, aren't you? It's getting the hang of that's it. It's my favourite part of carpentry, this pinging lines. I'll tell you what, you must have cried when he got that new oh, I thought chalk line getting... where you wouldn't be used. <laughs> he wouldn't need you for the other end, but it just shows. I've started to plan for new jobs. <laughs> I can't cut square on the plasterboard because I've got the rafter in the way now but that's fine because we already know that the plasterboard is going to be coming past that rafter the back of it is going to come past there and straight onto there like that so I can cut this plumb <laughs> look at that that's tight I'm pushing it I'm not holding it back at all Don't forget guys, the eyes of 300,000 YouTube viewers are on you. 300,000. Rufus, the plasterboard is free. And if you buy one, you can join the forum on Facebook. Oh, really? And there's all little tips and things on there from all other people all over the world that have been using them. Ian. <laughs> If it wasn't for James, you would never get to straighten out. You'd be like a, <laughs> a, a coal miner. Yeah. It's bent. This one. Top one, yeah. yeah. Bent double all day and on your oh. knees. That's, you come from a mining area, don't you, really? <laughs> well, more farming than yeah. anything else up in Cumbria. Yeah. Is it? There's no mines up there. there do you know what there might be actually? Not anymore, there aren't. There's no mines anywhere anymore. Either you're a builder, a builder or you're a farmer up in Cumbria. And if you don't want to work hard, you'll be a builder. <laughs> Those farmers yeah. working. I'll tell you hard. right, you, you, are, you are, sorry, I'll tell you what, you are dead right about farmers because I oh. used to do quite a lot of plumbing on farms, you know, for the Surrey County Council, go all over the place. Those guys are up at four o'clock oh, in the morning milking. Um, not until nine at night. Or uh, so I, I left the farm, I was doing emergency repair. I left there about 11 o'clock at night. I said, I'll have to come back in the morning because I can't finish it tonight. <laughs> and I said, what time do you start in the morning? He said, oh, I'll be up. He said, um, half four. I got there at half four and he was already in the milking parlor whistling, walking around as bright as anything. And I, thought, I thought you were, 11 o'clock last night, you were out in the field with yeah. me. <laughs> They're absolutely mad for it, them lot. Yeah. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah, if it wasn't for farmers, where would we be? Yeah, that's it. We have to eat almond pot and noodle. Milk. <laughs> pot noodle and almond milk. <laughs> that's the dream. The trouble I've got here is I've got this one in the way. I almost need to do them both at the same time. I've, I'll cut it back. Actually, yeah, good idea. Multi tool. Gold Virginia original. Yes, please, yeah. None of that pony stuff. What is the pony stuff? Old Hoban? Yeah. Is that still out, Old Hoban? Yeah. So I, I used to like the old Samson, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's safe, wasn't it? Oh, is that? Yeah, you're a lucky day. <laughs> you can get, you can back, get, in get back in, in the hole. hole. <laughs> <laughs> Within the regulations of putting this loft conversion in, we've put this board up and because it's thermal board, closed cell thermal board, it acts as a vapour barrier so that no moisture can get into this timber. Any moisture build up inside is not going to transmit into this timber. But now we've got four holes in the roof, which of course, there's no barrier here. So what we need to do now 
is this is a bit of DPM, uh, DPC in fact. So we'll just put that up on the side there and all around on every side. Just a couple of staples to hold it in position. Like that. And then we can cut it off. We, we don't have to come right to the front edge because we're already crossing the vapour barrier there. So they'll be in line with each other so we can get that nice and straight like that wonky line. We'll get it across the top, the other side and down the bottom. And then we're ready to put our board in which will fit up into that little groove there that they provide on the windows and then back to our trimmers and rafters. Before anyone asks, <laughs> this will be thermal board as well. We're not just using plain plasterboard because obviously we've now got this cold bridge here. So even though we've got the thermal collar that Keylight put into their windows, we're still going to use thermal backed board here so that we don't end up with any cold spots around any of the windows. So the point of the thermal collar in the Keylight windows is that they've done tests that show that say for example the temperature outside was minus five degrees that this bit of plasterboard here could be as low as zero degrees even though it's on the inside so that being the case the uh, moisture content inside the building from people breathing and moving around will be naturally attracted to the cold spot and then it will start producing black mold so having the built-in thermal color on the key light windows means that you don't have that problem I'm going to go 230, so any offcuts I've got I can use them on the top and bottom, even though it's well oversailed here. Now I'm wasting plasterboard. <gasps> and there's a couple of different ways of doing this to get this cut in. Um, so we've got our side cheeks in now and what I've done is I've cut a piece of board which is cut to the maximum distance so this is the biggest point uh, which I think was about 780 or something like that so I've got that it's got a square down either side now there's two ways of doing this the first one is I can measure the board which is yep 780 so we'll halve that which is 390 I think if my maths is good enough, it should be 390 that way. Yeah, 390. Uh, and then we can put a, a square line down the centre of there. I've left this board to hang over a bit so we can trim it off afterwards. So what I'll do is I'll put a, a scrap piece in there. That's the bottom, that's the line we're going to cut against. So if I know that that measurement is 215, I'm going to transfer that onto our piece here. So there we go, 215 there, 215 there. That's our bit that we're going to cut off at the end. And the reason for that is because when we mark the beveled sides, I need to mark it from that point there, up and up, not from this point. We've got our centre line. Uh, we know that's, already know that's the, 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 the biggest outside point. So now we just need to know what the smallest is at the top. So we've got, seven to let's say seven two six so half of seven two six is three hundred and sixty three that's the top the smallest point that's the biggest point and measured down from the window so we just join those two lines up and that's our bevel we'll cut the back away slightly so it fits against this piece which is slightly splayed so that's the first way to do it the second way to do it is Cut it to length, to the, to the biggest point. We don't need to find the center because we already know the length and we use a bevel, uh, or in this case, a rufus. And so it's no good doing it square like that. We've got to do it as the board's going in. Because it's a compound. Michael. Because it's a compound, yeah, exactly it. So we'll keep that like plumb like that and our bevel will fit in like that there. We'll lock, let's get that right, yeah, lock that off. So this should line up with the line we've just done from the measurement. Happy days. Yeah. And then transfer that to that side. We know we're good. And that's it. So we can cut those two off. 
We chamfer the back slightly to allow for the compound mitre. Obviously, if it was a timber or a roof, we'd be cutting it right back on the angle. Uh, but in this case, it's a bit plausible, so we can do that with a knife. Now I've cut the bevels on, we'll surf form these edges back. We could do it with a knife, but this is just a little bit tidier. So you see, we're just coming back there. Let me show you there on the angle. Get that right, nice and tight back there. Just so the back doesn't foul, and we want a nice tight joint on the front edges. Okay, so just before we put it up, because I did say we're using thermal board, but in this case, because it's such a big angle to cut off the back, you're cutting most of it away, and if you start cutting a little bit wobbly, you start getting gaps. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a bit of rock wall that will expand back out, will fill any gaps. And what I'm going to do here, rather than cut it with a knife because it's such an angle, I'm just going to run the saw. people obviously I can hear them I can see them already who will say that they like to keep the cheeks those side bits square yeah and just splay the top and bottom so that is an option isn't it yeah definitely but obviously any splay you get makes the window look a bit bigger it bit does more light. it splays the light a bit more yeah. it's not a massive amount but and it gives the impression of a bigger window as well mm. okay mate thank you very much indeed no problem have a nice weekend if that's possible I'm sure we'll manage that <laughs>